hey, what's up? We have an infinite nested radical, and we're going to show it's equal to x. So let's assume that x is a positive number. And let's go through it just very carefully. So let's first assume that we only had one square root. So if we just have the square root of x, we all know that's equal to x. And there's a 1 here, and there's a little 2 here. So that's 1 over 2. So the square root of x is x to the 1 half. So if we have two square roots, so the square root of x times the square root of x inside it, you can turn all of the square roots into exponents with one half powers. So you can write this as x times x to the one half. And then we have a one half out here. That's from the outer square root. That's from this outer bigger square root here. Properties of exponents say that whenever we have a product like this, being raised to a power, we can raise each factor to a power. So this is x to the 1 half times, and then here we raise this one to a power. So it's really x to the 1 half to the 1 half. And what you do is you multiply. So 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. So we get x to the 1 fourth. When you have uh, multiplication like this, and the bases are the same, you can just add the exponents. So this is x to the 1 half plus 1 fourth. Good stuff. Let's do it again. Now we'll have three x's. So x square root x square root x. OK, just for clarity, uh, I'm going to do it below. It's a little bit harder to understand this step. So first, let's deal with this outer square root. That's going to become a parentheses and a 1 half. Then we have this x here, so x. Then we have this one here, OK, that'll be um, parentheses x. Then this little guy here, x to the 1 half. And then we have this little guy here, 1 half. That's, that's from this one here that I just highlighted. So this is equal to, again, you can raise each piece to the 1 half, so it would be x to the 1 half. And then raising this second piece here to the 1 half, it's already to the 1 half, this piece here I'm circling in red. So what you do is you multiply the 1 half times the 1 half, and you get 1 fourth, OK? So this is x, x to the 1 half, to the 1 fourth. We're almost done, getting there. This is equal to, so we still have the first x to the 1 half, no problems there. Again, we have a 1 fourth here, so this one here becomes raised to the 1 fourth, so times x to the 1 fourth. And then here, 1 fourth times 1 half is 1 eighth. Ha! Now things are starting to look very, very pretty. We have a product, so we multiply, so we add the exponents. 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. So now you can start to see the pattern. Right? The first one you get is 1 half, so we have x to the 1 half. The second one you get is x to the 1 half plus 1 fourth. The third one you get is x to the 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. Let's go ahead and rewrite what we have. So we have, use a different color back to blue. So we have the square root, then we have x square root, x square root, x square root. I'll just put three little dots here just to indicate that the pattern continues. So this is going to be equal to, based off our work, x to the 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus dot, dot, dot. So we have an infinite sum. This is an infinite geometric sum. There's a bunch of ways uh, to figure out the sum. You can easily prove uh, that this sum is equal to 1. You can use a formula found in any calculus book or in any textbook. I like to use a formula that I kind of made up. I call it the super formula. So whenever you have a geometric sum like this, what you do is you just take um, the first term. So let me write it down here, 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, plus dot, dot, dot. So the super formula says you take uh, whatever is here. So you take this number here, and that goes up top always, no matter what. And on the bottom, it's always 1 minus r. So it's your first term over 1 minus r, always. That's the super formula. And r is your common ratio. It's the number that you multiply to get from 1 half to 1 fourth. Well, in this case, r is 1 half. So to get from 1 half to 1 four, you multiply by r, so that's your r. So it's 1 half over 1 minus 1 half. This is 1 half over 1 half. So that's equal to 1. 
So this infinite sum is equal to x to the 1. If you don't like that formula, you can just use the regular uh, geometric sum formula. So this is x to the 1, which is x, and that completes the problem. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has uh, made sense and it's been enlightening. Uh, make sure to subscribe and all that good stuff. Take care.